Hello and welcome to a tour of Octopus Deploy 3.13. My name is Rob Pearson. I'm an engineer at Octopus helping to design and ship new features, enhancements and bug fixes. I'll be your guide as I walk through our May 2017 release. It's been another busy month at Octopus and we have some great new features to talk about. The big highlight this month is that we've added first class support for Azure Service Fabric. This was a highly requested feature, so we're happy to ship it this month. Next up, we've improved the Octopus Web Portal to cache some of the high cost queries, so it will only reload data if new events have taken place on the server. This can significantly improve the performance of your Octopus server. We've added support to turn on HTTP strict transport security. So if your Octopus server is available over the internet, we recommend reading up on this. We also added support for optional lifecycle phases. And you can now fail a script with a user-friendly message that will be displayed on the deployment overview. We've added the ability to modify task state. This is very handy in scenarios where you want to set a failed deployment as successful, or vice versa. Finally, we've added the ability to access channel indexed version template variables. Now, let's take a look at the new Azure Service Fabric support. First, I'd like to highlight our documentation for this new feature. If you navigate to octopus.com slash docs, and search for Service Fabric, you'll find the new docs. Azure Service Fabric is relatively complex, so it's a good idea to review how we have added support. The two key scenarios that we have added support for are deploying a package to an Azure Service Fabric cluster and executing Service Fabric PowerShell scripts. We've written step-by-step -step guides to help you get started. Now, I'd like to show you how this actually looks in Octopus. I've already set up an Azure Service Fabric cluster, so I won't go over that, but I'll highlight the steps to deploy an application to it. I have a demo project, and I'll navigate to its deployment process. It currently has two steps, but I'll show you how to add a new one. There are two new step templates that add Service Fabric support. One for deploying a Service Fabric application, and one for executing a Service Fabric PowerShell script. That said, I'll jump back and look at the two steps I've already configured. The first step is to deploy a Service Fabric app. You can see it runs on the Octopus server. I've specified my application package, I've entered my Service Fabric cluster details, and I can configure the deployment details, including how upgrades are handled and what to overwrite, etc. If I jump back, the second step is to deploy is to execute a Service Fabric PowerShell script that simply checks the health of my application. Again, this includes the details of my Service Fabric cluster, and a simple PowerShell script. If I quickly create a release, and then just deploy it, Skipping to the end, we can see that it's, ex it's deployed successfully, and if we check the deployment log or the task log, we can see that it was deployed successfully and the health is okay. That's it for this month. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to try out some of the new features, visit octopus.com/downloads or click one of the links in the description below.